Welcome once again. Uh, teacher will uh, your name, my name of this class of P7, and today's lesson is multiplication in a finite system. Remember where we started from. We had addition, we had subtraction, we went to some equations. Now we are back at multiplication. Somebody is asking himself, teacher, shall we also have division in the finite system? The answer remains yes, because we deal with all operations. So in the multiplication in the finite system, we shall look at different methods of working out multiplication of finite system in the finite system. But I want you to note the following. By the end of this lesson, make sure that at least you are able to multiply in a finite system using either mat uh, calculation methods or using a dial. Somebody may say, teacher, can I also use a number line? That is possible. It will depend to our time frame. The methods we shall look at. Then as we move on, we shall be also trying to show you uh, the other methods. Uh, if we use two in this lesson, then maybe next time I will show you how the third one works. Hope you've noted that one. At the end of it all, when you know how to use calculation method in terms of multiplication in finite system, how to use a dial, because those are the simplest methods. For the number line, later alone. But for today, I may not use it because of my time frame. Uh, if I take some of examples that will really guide us through this lesson, and I want you to watch very well, because after this, I have to give you what to do. Assume somebody has said an example, or example one is telling us, multiply Three times two, but this is finite five. Members, how do you go by this? Uh, we are going to take the two methods, and the method one is going to be calculation method. How do you go about this in terms of calculations? <laughs> we do as usual if I say three times two finite five. Three times two, what do I, what do I get? In other words, they are asking three groups of twos. Somebody is saying six, but you cannot find six in finite five. So therefore, what do we do? We are going to divide by five. Our finite five is here. Six divided by five. How many fives are in six? Somebody saying one. Do you have the remainder? The remainder is one. Finite five. In this case, what do we take? We take the remainder. We take the remainder. So we shall conclude by saying three times two. The answer is one. And this is finite Finite five. Just yes, multiplication is as simple as you can see. Okay? Uh, you underline very well. Somebody is asking, which methods, other methods are you talking about? Method two is going to be the use of a dial, or what you call dial method. How do you go about this? Dial method, you all know how to draw a dial. It is like a clock face. Remember, as I make this dial, not the following digits that are supposed to be used in a finite five. The digits to be used will have zero, one, two, 
three and four. We can't go beyond this if I'm going to use my dial. So how do I make it? Here it will be zero. This is one, two, three. Somebody saying, let the four be here. Okay? Now, we come back and we interpret three times two. If it is finite five. In other words, they're asking, how many groups, how many laps can I make clockwise? So this means three laps, as you can talk about the lap, or other people will call them jumps. How many jumps of twos? How many jumps of threes can I make? Do we want only two of them? Three laps of of twos. How do you make them here? Somebody is saying, let we begin from the start, whereby we shall make the first lap of two. The first lap of two is this one. Somebody may name it first lap. Make another lap of twos. Because it will be from here up to here. Our second lap of twos is this one. Somebody may label it second lap. But they are telling us to make three laps. And each lap must have two. So our third lap will move from up to here. It will move until it stops here. This is my third lap. Have I made three of them? Yes, but where have I stopped from? I've stopped just where figure one is. Now, how do you conclude your answer? Somebody will come back here and say, if I have three times two, my answer is where the second, the third lap of twos has stopped and it has stopped on one. And this is finite, finite five. Hope you've enjoyed this method, you people. Some are saying, ah, oh, teacher, I've enjoyed the first one. Good. Eh. So and so is saying, I've enjoyed the third one because it involves like, you know, you are jumping, jumping like a frog. As like, some people like that game of jumping like a frog. Well, I've said a number line can also be used, but this time, allow me to go to the second example, uh, the number line will be shown to you maybe in the next lesson. Assume our example two is telling us to work out. I want you to watch very well. To work out three times two, somebody is putting squared. Watch that one. And this is mod six. Teacher, what is that one we brought? Yeah, okay, okay. We shall see how this one works. You know how to interpret two squared. What is two squared? Somebody saying it is the same to say, allow me to take you through calculation method first. That will be my order. Calculation first, dial next. Calculation first, dial next. So if I take, uh, sorry, three times two squared uh, mod six. This is the same as three times two times two. Two squared means two times two. And you can leave this one because this is uh, an independent number, though it is squared. Somebody saying mod six. And now, this still takes you three times four. Mod six. When you go back at the first one, we multiplied as usual, by the way. We never bothered you. We, we had to say till three times four. Somebody saying it gives you 12. Fine. But you have 12 in the finite six, in the mod six. Somebody saying no. So what do we do? We divide by the mod. And this will give us how many times do we have? Six in 12. Somebody saying two. Very good. 
But do we have any remainder? Somebody is saying the remainder is nothing. <laughs> nothing in this case. Let's have a zero. And this is mod six. And how do we determine the answer? As I said here, we determine the answer to be the remainder, this one. So we can conclude and say uh, three times two squared uh, is equivalent to zero, and this is mod six. Hope really you've been enjoying that calculation method. In the case there is a square, or they have chubed it, there is no difference still, you expand and multiply. Expand, multiply. Allow me to take you through dial method. Dial method. For this case, somebody's asking himself, herself, how teacher then how does that one work? Eh, it is very tough. No, it isn't. Everything is possible in this case. Mathematics, everything is possible. That's why we have some negative answers. That's why we have the small answers. That's why we have fractions. To mean that everything is possible in mathematics. We don't have impossibilities. Impossibilities are not there in mathematics. <laughs> so you have to be careful of the word impossible. Impossible means something, nothing can be done. And in the mathematics, sincerely, we don't have that. So if it is to use our dial method, This is my dial, but I want to remind you, if it is mod six, which digits do we use? To remind you, we shall have zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Please don't have six in this case. So we shall have our zero, one, two, three, four. Somebody saying five could be here, okay? So how do we go about three times two squared? And this is mod six. I want you to watch carefully. As I did it here, we shall still calculate and say, this is three times two times two. This is mod six. And this will give us three times four, mod six. So our emphasis is here. And we interpret the way I did here. So we shall have three laps, as somebody can call them jumps. Yes? But these laps, each of them should be of fours. Make sure there are three laps, but each lap has four of them. Follow me properly now. If our starting point is here, we make the first lap of fours. That means to remove uh, up to four. Our first, this is our first lap of fours. But you want to make three of them. If I move from here and I want to make four of them, it will be one, two, three, four. So it will stop here, the second lap. Somebody saying this is the second. Teacher, where will you put the third? Still, I will count from two and I make four. One, two, three, four. It will stop around here. So I will move. Follow me properly because somebody who has not been watching cannot make this. And my third lap is this one. Somebody who has not been watching cannot even understand exactly what I'm doing unless you are watching. So, look at where the third lap or the last lap has stopped. To be sincere, if you have two eyes, you'll say and you'll identify that it has stopped on zero. Finally, what shall we say? We shall say, if I have three times two squared, the answer is going to be zero, and this is mod six. Okay? A blood child must have underlined, or you need to underline to make sure that really your answers are well observed. Okay? Hope some people are enjoying this one. Others are saying, no, teacher, the best is the calculation method. Well, all of them are good. 
depending on your attention. But when you ask a question, never use both. Choose the simplest. Choose what you can take. Allow me to take you through the last example, of which the last example you will also use the two methods. That is the calculation method and dial method or clock arithmetic method. Assume we have been told as our example three to calculate calculate two to the power three and this is finite finite seven. Oh teacher now what is that? Two to the power three but remember here we also had squared. But here we have cubed. Now, can't you really borrow the idea? Fine. <laughs> if we go by calculation method, if we go by calculation method in this case, two to the power three, finite, seven, is the same as 2 times 2 times 2. And this is finite 7. Ha, teacher, now, where will it go? <laughs> you multiply the way you are seeing it. As, because I've said calculate. Work out. Simplify. So this will give us 2 times 2, you have 4 times 2, finite 7. And this gives us 8. But... Do we have 8 in finite 7? Have you asked yourself that question? Can it be possible to have 8 in finite 7? So that we can leave this one as the answer? No, we cannot. Therefore, we shall have our 8, we divide by 7. And this is finite 7. And we shall have our answers 1, remainder 1, finite 7. Does it remain like this? Remember where we came from, we look at our remainders to be our final answers, yes? And in this case, we shall say, therefore, if I have two cubed, it is the same as one, as long as it is in a finite seven, okay? Hope that one is also very simple. Before I go to how to use a dial in this case, of which people are now saying, teacher, we are waiting. Teacher, we are watching. Me, I'm waiting for my method of using a dial, or what we call dial method. Yes. How do we go about dial method? In the case, you have been given two to the power three. Yes. In this case, if you have been given uh, two to the power three, let's first look. If it is finite 7 and uh, our dial is as simple as that, remind yourselves which digits are used in finite 7. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hope you have not put 7. Likewise, when it comes to the dial, we shall not involve 7 there. So we shall have our 0. One, two, three, four, five. Lastly, we have six there. Hope you are watching. Those who are to enjoy the dial, you need to observe carefully from the start to the last. When you watch it after I've done, it is as if it is disorganized. <laughs> you want to watch properly. But if you have been following, it is as simple as eating matoke. Now in this case, if you have two to the power three, finite seven. How do you go about it? Simplify it. This is the same as two times two times two, but this is finite seven. In this case, we are going to put them in twos, in the two groups, or laps to me to say two laps of fours or fours or fours, four laps of twos. All the all they will work are the same. So I can decide to to multiply the first twos, and I get four times two. 
5 at 7. Whereby now I interpret it the way I've been doing here, the way I've done it here, as long as there are any two categories. Somebody may even multiply the other two, no problem. It will remain the same if you have to look for the mathematics property and uh, commutative property. It doesn't make any change. So we shall have four laps of twos. We are going to make four of them, but each lap must have two. Watch and go with me. The starting point is here. Four laps, each lap must have two. The first lap, watch, have you, have you watched this one? This gives us the first. Go to the second lap of two, it will move up to four. By the way, what I never reminded you, always follow the direction. That means I'm using the arrow to show my direction. Somebody saying, teacher, you have forgotten to put the second lap. Yes, I've put it. But have you put yours? Good. Make the third lap. Some saying it is from four up to six. Third lap. But how many laps are we making? Four of them. Last lap. It will move from here up to here. And we shall really identify this one to be our final answer. Because it is where the fourth arrow has stopped. Because they told us there are four laps of twos. How do we conclude this? We shall have our two cubed is equal to one. And this is finite. Finite seven. Hope you've watched all the two methods, both calculation method and dial method on both uh, three examples. Hope you have watched this. You've picked a leaf. You've really learned how to group, how to make laps of others, how to move as you have been told in using a dial, as you have been told in the calculation method. Hope you cannot forget this. These methods have been so simple have been so simple. I've said number line can be used, but it will be the next lesson. I beg you to stop here. Thank you for listening to me. The next you will do my activity when we end this lesson. I want to thank you so much.